Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly Dean from Kimberly Dean Designs and today I'm going to be creating an alcohol ink floral on one of these Ranger Hardcore panels. These are the alcohol ink hardcore art panels and they come in different shapes and sizes. This is a 4x4 four four square. They come in a hexagon, 4 inch hexagon and this is a 5x7 rectangular shape. I'm going to use the 5x7 for this demonstration. And we're just going to do something very loose, a very loose floral design and with not any sort of intention on a specific shape or type of flower. We're just going to let the inks flow and create something just pretty much on the abstract side, but going for a floral look. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz alcohol ink blower tool to move the ink and I have some blending solution that I've transferred into this little bottle here just so that I have a little bit more control over it. I picked out some of my favorite alcohol ink colors. This is Vineyard, a pretty purple, Fiesta is pink, and Clover, which is a pretty kind of bluish green color. And I might add some butterscotch in there. I haven't decided yet. I'm just going to let this play out, see what happens. Now this panel is non-porous, so it's excellent for alcohol ink. It wipes back to white. You might get a tiny bit of staining with some colors, but for the most part, you can wipe off any mistakes and not really see anything left behind. It's the same on both sides. So if you make a mistake and want to flip it over, you can do that, or you can wipe it away and start over. And again, you might get some staining, but it's not going to stain as much as you would see maybe on some of the synthetic papers like Upo. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my gloves on. I have, I think, everything I need. i also be using some of these little micro tools, which are little micro makeup or micro dental tools. They're excellent for putting down your ink if you want to just put small amounts down on and you know add some detail to your painting. So I'll be using some of those as well. So I went ahead and put some of my colors down in a small palette. Let me add some more to this. So I've got some of my purple, my pink, and my I've got some um that's orange from another project, but let me just wipe that out. And I might use some butterscotch in there. We'll see about that later. And then some of my clover. Put that down. Okay. All right, I'm going to use one of my tools. Go ahead and go into that purple. Just put a little bit down here. And let's do a little bit of, just put a little bit of pink over there too. There's really no right or wrong to this because we are going to keep this very loose. So don't worry if yours is not going to look just like mine. I would not be able to repeat something that I'm doing today because with alcohol ink, the beauty of it is that every painting is going to look completely different. You're never going to get two designs that look exactly the same. And so when you start painting with alcohol ink and you see your design going in a certain direction, it might not be what you had planned initially, but the point I think of alcohol ink is just to let it flow and let those pretty colors just develop the way that they will and use what the inks give you to work with in making your design look unique to you. Putting a little bit of that green down that clover too. All right so I'm going to use my blending solution, lay a little bit of that down along the edge of that ink and just give it a little air. Now again, I'm not going for any sort of specific type of petal or shape. I just want to get some ink to flow. And my goal is to get it to look like a, you know, a floral in the end, but not anything very specific. So this little tool that I'm using, this is the Tim Holtz alcohol ink blower tool. You really don't need to, you know, use a lot of effort with this, just a small some small pressure from your hand will do the trick. It just needs to put out a little bit of air to get the inks to move. I'm going to turn my board around, put a little bit more blending solution. I'm just putting a little bit there because I don't want my inks to go too far because I have a, a smaller surface here that I'm working on. And I like to continue to blow the ink, just give it a little bit of air until it's dry. That way I can, it doesn't form some odd, you know, looking shapes on the end. Let's put down some more blending solution, a little bit more air. And you see how as it dries, you, 
it becomes the color that it is. It might start out looking a little bit pink, and then as it dries, it turns a little more purple. So it really depends on the color that you're using, but it will look a little bit different when you when it's wet with blending solution. And some people ask about blending solution versus alcohol, and I'll tell you my take on that. Um, you can use 91% alcohol. That would work to move the ink, but you're going to get some of the color lifted off when you do that. It tends to pull some of that color away. So if you want to keep the vibrancy of the inks, I think personally that blending solution does a better job at that. But everybody has their own thing. You might find that it works just as well for you. But in my experience, I believe that blending solution really helps to retain those beautiful, vibrant colors. I'm just giving a little bit of air again. Now where I've got this green right here, I'm thinking I'm just going to put a little bit of blending solution here and just let that ink kind of drip. I'm going to see if I can get it to drip down on my paper. So I'm just holding it at an angle and just kind of letting that ink drip away. I got a little bit there that I'm going to push back upward. So it just kind of gives you the idea of a little stem in there, but I didn't have to actually draw it or anything or paint it in. I was like, just put a little alcohol and let it drip down. And I might change that as I go. And I'm going to get a paper towel and just wipe up some of this excess blending solution that I've got here. All right, so let's do another little bloom over here. All right, here's a little bit of my purple. And again, that purple is Vineyard. And Fiesta is my pink. I get some more of that in my palette. All right, so I'm going to give it a little bit of air. And the reason I'm doing that really is just to, that I'm drying the ink. It's just so that it doesn't spread super far. Since I'm working on this little 5 by 7 piece, I don't want my ink to take off. So if you dry it a little bit before you start moving it with your blending solution, you're going to get, uh, just have a little bit more control over it. So a little bit of blending solution. Just use your little blower here to move the ink in the direction that you want it to go. So I'm just kind of pushing it outward from that center area. And you can continue to move even, you know, if you get something that doesn't appeal to you, just go right over it again with some blending solution. You can continue to move the ink every time you add a blending solution to it. So let's just say right here, I want to change this some. I could just go right over top of it and change that again and soften it up. Let's go down in this direction a little bit. just pushing the ink down in the direction that I want it to go. I'm going to push a little bit over this direction some. Now if you go over some of those areas, like if I go over some of that green that I had already put down there, you're going to, it's going to change it some. So just be careful if you're trying to keep your something over here looking the way that it was. You don't want to go over top of this part you already painted if you're uh, concerned about changing the shape of it. Okay, so um, I'm going to do another one right over here. So a little bit more pink. So I like that this one that looks a little, more, a little more pink. This one looks a little bit more purple. Um, and I am going to add 
tiny bit of pink in this one too. All right, so let's spread this one out some. Again, I'm just putting a just a drop of blending solution. go back and forth on the sides of these what I'm calling little petals I know they're very abstract looking but I'm calling these my little petals and when you push it out you can go around the outer edges to kind of shape them up the way you want them to be let's soften this side up a little bit Just a little bit here. And I wanted this to spread so much that it's interfering with my other little flowers that I've already got down. So I'm trying to keep this one a little bit more confined to this area right here. So I'll blow it kind of back in its original position a little bit and then go go back and forth until I can keep that shape a little bit smaller there. Let's do that one more time right here. So go back in its original position and I just kind of keep going back and forth until I get it sort of where I want it. I might have to go over that one again. Let's do that again. Okay, so this one really didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, so I'm going to show you how you're able to just wipe that ink away if you want to make any corrections. So I'm just taking a paper towel and I'm putting my blending solution on it. And if I wanted just to remove this specific area, I could do that. And see how that just took that away. And then I could just do that one over again. Clean it up a little bit more. And I'll show you how we just took all of that away there. I almost like it you might just want to leave it like that, but I'm gonna put it just put a little bit more down right there. Just give it a tiny bit of movement right there in that top area. Okay, so down here, like this one's coming really long. If I didn't want that, I could just wipe that away. Just use a paper towel just to kind of clean some of that up there. I could clean up anything that, you know, is a little bit distracting for me or anything that I don't particularly like. Just go in and clean that up. And that's what I, I love about these boards is that you're able to clean up mistakes or just clean up little areas. All right, so let's, I'm gonna go with that for now. I'm gonna use my green, this is Clover. Put that in my palette. I'm just, you can use a brush or whatever you have handy, but if you have these little tools, these are nice for just drawing little stems in. Just put a little bit of green in. I wiped a lot of it off beforehand, but I'm just going to come over here and just pull a little bit of a stem in there, maybe right there, and we've already got one coming down this direction, so I'm just going to kind of put something there, and then I might um, do some very abstract looking, maybe little uh, leaves or just some uh, an idea of something coming off of these stems here, so I'm just putting a little bit of my green down, and then I'll use my blending solution to move that the same way, just kind of give it a tiny bit of air there.
and that just kind of gives me a place to start and then you can use you know your tool to go in and just kind of I like to just kind of draw with it almost just kind of use it to add some little kind of swirls in there just to give my it's a little bit of motion a little bit of movement in there and you at any time you know you can always add a little alcohol to it to to give it a little bit more uh, to make it a little more fluid looking and you could also add some, you know, little dots of your color in there. Like I could put a, you know, a little bit of purple in here in some areas. Maybe a little bit of that pink too. Trying to keep it pretty random because I do want this to look fairly loose. And I want to do a little bit of something in the centers of these flowers. And I'm going to use my snow cap. This is the white mixative. I put some of that in my palette and use one of my little tools just to add some highlights in the middle of these flowers just to give them a little bit of depth in there. Let's come into this one, do a, some little dots in there. You could you know, put some little stamens in, in there if you wanted to. Now this white might kind of soak into that background and you might be able to see some of that color. It might be taking on that color behind it. So, but if you let your, if you let your ink dry a little bit, let your painting dry some, this white's gonna show up better. And sometimes that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and let it dry some. This is just a touch of some, of a little bit of a highlight in there just to give it some, some interest. You could also do it in on some of these little, these little dots I put down. You could add some white in there. Sometimes I'll also add a little bit of white in with my stems or my little leaves. So in the beginning, I said I might use this butterscotch, and I think I am just going to add a little hint of this butterscotch just to give it another little bit of interest. So I just put some butterscotch in my palette. I'm going to go in and just add a little bit of that. This is a, well, it is, it's butterscotch, so it's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. It's actually a very pretty color. I'm going to put some of that in the center, I think, too. And then I might come out here and add a little bit of that in some spots just to just to have a little bit more of a another little supporting co color in there. Put that down in my stems a little bit. And this is just a little fun painting, so we're not trying to make anything that looks super realistic, but something that's fun and more on the abstract side. And I'm gonna go into that purple. Just kinda pull a little bit of a, like some stamens up in through these centers a little bit. And to me, that just sort of gives it a little bit more energy in there too. A little bit more movement. And even though they're just uh, very much on the abstract loose side, I think it's nice to have some good movement in there. And I'm just darkening up those centers a little bit just to give it some more depth in there. And then you, if you wanted to, you could add your white back in there for some 
pretty little highlights. And it's fun just to have, you know, just to play with it. Just see what you can come up with. If you do this and you enjoy it, I'd love to hear back from you. Just leave me any comments you have and um, any questions you might have. And I'll be happy to answer anything that you have questions about. I hope you enjoy this and I would love to see what you do with it. Thanks, everyone.